Yo, what is up guys? It is Nick, or the Notorious Fantasy, back again today with another fantasy football video. In today's video, I got you guys the Week 15 tight end start or sit decisions. Now I go through every game all the way from Thursday night all the way until Monday night and tell, the, tell you whether you should start or sit the tight ends in that matchup. Now before I get in the video, I'd like to give you guys a word from my friends and my sponsor over at Overlay DFS. Com. OverlayDFS.com is my favorite way to play daily fantasy sports. Now, obviously, on the website, they have NFL, mainly what I cover, but they also have NBA as well, so you can get your fix for both NBA and NFL on OverlayDFS.com. Now, obviously, I'm going to be talking about the NFL here. The, my favorite game to play is the progressive game mode. Now, they have entries at all price points, $2.5, $22, or 100 and nine dollars. Now the cool thing here is what progressive means. There's that beautiful progressive bonus. If you hit twelve and O, oh, you will cash that progressive bonus. And the twenty-two dollar game, you cash a progressive bonus of over ten thousand dollars. Now obviously on Sunday it is going to be even higher than that. I'm recording this on Tuesday. It is going to be even higher at that time when it comes to hit Sunday. So make sure you check that out. Now the way that the game works, it is very simple. If you hit the top ten percent of players, you win nine times your buy-in. It is that simple. And the way I'm going to show you how it works, it is so simple. All you got to do is make 12 picks plus three alternate play picks in case one of your players ends up getting hurt or something happens that causes the matchup to be voided. It is so simple. It is player versus player. Pat Mahomes versus Denver, or do you think Jimmy Garoppolo will do better versus the Atlanta Falcons? It is so simple. To me, that is obviously Pat Mahomes, but there's so many matchups here. Over 30 plus matchups that you could choose from. They are different every single week, and it is so easy to do. Pretty much, you're not even really playing against everyone. It's just you versus the cutoff to see if you can hit that top 10% and win nine times your buy-in. So make sure to check out Overlay DF S.com. Link down below in the description. And we are back. Make sure to check out OverlayDFS.com. Link down below in the description. Let's get right into the video. Week 15, tight end, start or sit decisions. The first game here, we got the Jets at the Ravens, the Thursday night special in a game that will not be so special for the New York Jets. I prefer, I honestly predict that the Jets are going to get their ass railed in repeatedly by this Ravens offense. And obviously, when Mark Andrews is on the field, if he is 100% healthy, like I believe he will be to go, Tonight, I believe that Mark Andrews will be able to go balls deep in this Jets defense. Even if they pull Lamar after the first two quarters, the first half of the game, after they dominate the Jets, I still believe Mark Andrews will be able to put up numbers in this game and be a top 12 asset for your fantasy football team. I'm going to be sitting down Ryan Griffin in this game, Mr. Sticky Hand. Uh, the reason why he's called that is because he went to go fuck spike the ball, and you know, his hand, you know, he just was like, fuck it, oh, the ball's stuck, uh, I have such good hands. My name's Ryan Griffin, that's what he was doing. And he is hurt, I doubt he is going to play in this matchup, so there's other Jets tight ends. Obviously, I would not reach for any of those other guys. Now, on to the Sunday night, or not the Sunday night, the Sunday slate of games. The first game here, we got the rematch from the first game of the year, the Bears at the Packers, a game that was an absolute snooze fest. I don't like any of the tight ends in this game. Jimmy Gr Jimmy Graham, I should say, is a guy that any single game, he could just go off and go absolutely ham and score you like 20 points, but there's also the dice roll chance that he scores you zero points. He puts up that fat goose egg in your lineup, and I just will not roll the dice this week up against the Chicago Bears, and Chicago Bears have a bunch of other tight ends, Trey Burton not playing, so there's just a bunch of other guys. Obviously, some of that, there's potential for one of those guys to score, but at the end of the day, there's too many of them. It is very hard to decide which one to play, so you're just going to be sitting all of the tight ends in this matchup. The next game here is the Patriots at the Bengals. A bit of spy gate action in this game. And for the Bengals, for the Patriots, they really have no tight end that I want to start in this game. Tyler Eifert, obviously the primary tight end of the Cincinnati Bengals, just really has not gotten it done all that much this year. He's had a few good games, but obviously finding a great game up against the Patriots is going to be hard to do for Tyler Eifert. So he's definitely a sit this week for me. And Mr. Ben Watson is also a sit for me from the New England Deflatriots. I really just do not trust Ben Ben Watson at all. He really has not shown me this season that I can trust him and play him on a weekly basis or even play him at all in fantasy football. Next game here, we got the Seattle Seahawks at the Carolina Panthers. And I like Ian Thomas in this matchup. Drop my drawers and let her see my third leg. Greg Olson is going to be out of this matchup. And I believe that Ian Thomas will fill his shoes quite well, just like he did last week. I think there is a chance that Ian Thomas finds the end zone this week 
against the Seattle Seahawks. I definitely like him to be a top 10 tight end on the week. Jacob Hollister, a.k.a. Jacob Abercrombie, a.k.a. Jacob Abercrombie and Fitch, whatever the fuck you want to call him. He is going to be a start for me this week as well. Russell Wilson loves throwing the ball to the tight end. Obviously, earlier in the season, it was Will Disley. Now it's been Jacob Hollister, and I believe that Jacob Hollister could have a great game this week up against the Carolina Panthers defense that has not looked all that hot. Knock one time if you are with me, and if you guys have enjoyed the video thus far, please make sure to click that subscribe button down below. Next game here, we got the Texans at the Tennessee Titans. In this game, while I like both of the quarterbacks in this game and a couple of wide receivers in this game, I really do not like the tight end choices in this game. Both of these guys seem like dice rolls to me. Obviously, if they find the end zone, you're going to be seeing great production out of them in the game, but I really don't trust either of these guys to find the end zone when it comes to fantasy this week. I just do not trust them. Janu Smith and Darren Fells, to me, are safe to ride the pine on my fantasy football team and on yours as well. Next game here, we got the Dolphins at the New York Giants. Two games in a row for the Dolphins in the Meadowlands. Maybe this week the Giants won't have to lift their kicker like the Jets did because Sam Darnold is so fucking shit that they wouldn't lift him. They're going to have to lift the kicker because he's the best player on the goddamn team. I'm going to be starting up Mike Gasicki Licky on Mike Gasicki in this game. Obviously last week he did not find the end zone and neither did any other option on the Dolphins because fucking Ryan Fitzpatrick could not score a touchdown. Jason Sanders kicked seven field goals. Yes, you heard that right. Seven field goals in the game. I believe Mike Gasicki finds the end zone this week, given he's the only fucking wide receiver on the team. He's not even a wide receiver. He's a tight end. I don't think Devontae Parker is going to play, but you get the point. I don't think Parker is going to play. It's going to be just Alan Hearns and maybe Albert Wilson's out. So it's really going to be Alan Hearns and Mike Gesicki in this game. And I really think that Mike Gesicki could have a huge game this week against the New York Giants. I'm going to be sitting down Caden Smith in this game. Obviously, he's the backup for Evan Ingram last week. Really did not do anything up against the Phil Philadelphia Eagles. And Evan Ingram, I highly doubt, is going to play. So he will ride the pine as well this week. Next game here, we got the Eagles at the Washington Redskins. Now, I'm going to be starting up Zach Ertz in this game. Obviously, Zach Ertz last week found the end zone not once, but twice on that Monday night special up against the New York Giants. I believe that Zach Ertz could have another big game this week up against a trash-ass Redskins defense. And Dallas Godert was looking good as well in that win on Monday night. I believe that Dallas Godert is a guy that you could start pretty much every single week, even though they have Zach Ertz. They have two tight end options on the team that I could see being top 12 guys. And I could potentially see Zach Ertz being the number one tight end end on the week, and I'll be sitting down all the other Washington Redskins tight ends. Next game here, we got the Broncos at the Chiefs. Horsecock, Drew Locke versus Showtime's Mahomes, and I'm going to be starting up Travis Kelsey in this game. Obviously, there's a zero shot. You can bench the best tight end in the game, Travis Kelsey. Nick, you fucking idiot. You know George Kittle's actually the best tight end in the game. He's nine times better. He's putting up more yards. He's looking better. Travis Kelsey's kind of having a down year. He's not playing that great for my fantasy team. I want you, uh, you fucking idiot. How can you not say that George Kittle is the best? Why do you think Travis Kelsey is the best, you goddamn idiot? That's probably what you're thinking right now. You're pissed off at me. But Travis Kelsey, you can't fucking sit him. He has been playing pretty good this year. Obviously, he's had. he really just hasn't lived up to my expectation of him. But he's still been playing great. He's probably going to fucking pass the thousand yards. He's playing phenomenal this season. I really believe that Travis Kelsey will have a big, big, big game this week up against the Denver Broncos. Now, I'm also going to be starting up Noah Fant on the other side of the ball. Noah Fant has been playing quite well the last couple of games. Him and Big Dick Drew Locke, Horsecock Drew Locke, as I like to call him, are going to have a big game this week against the Chiefs. I believe that Noah Fant will be able to get a lot of usage in this game. He really does look towards the tight end as well as Cortland Sutton. Next game here, we got the Buccaneers at the Lions. I'm going to be sitting down all the tight ends in this game. O.J. Howard is obviously a coin flip, whether fucking famous Jameis is going to be able to find him. Jameis Winston is going to be squinting on the sideline trying to find O.J. fucking Howard because he just never throws the ball to him. And then there'll be a game where he throws the ball to him, he scores a touchdown, he scores two touchdowns, and you're pissed off, but at the end of the day, I would not roll the dice, roll my fantasy uh, semifinals on O.J. Howard. I just do not trust him. Camera bright when O.J. Howard is healthy, when O.J. Howard is looking kind of okay. I just cannot trust him, even up against this trash-ass Lions defense, and even with Mike Evans missing the game and likely the rest of the season. I'm going to be also be sitting down all the other Detroit tight ends. Obviously, my boy, Mr fucking Detroit Lions tight end whose name is escaping me because he was so good and then he started disappointing. His name was TJ Hawkinson. He was playing great at the beginning of the season and then he shit the bed and now he's 
hurt out for the season. He ain't going to play anymore. All these other Detroit tight ends, fuck them all. You don't need to play any of these guys in this game. Next game here, we got the Browns at the Arizona Cardinals. I'm going to be starting up David Njoku in this game. He's got the eh next to his name because he did nothing in his debut. And if he plays in this game, he had suffered a setback yesterday in practice. If he plays in this game, I'm just going to fucking start him. I'm going to roll the dice and throw it up against the wall because the Cardinals defense can not stop the tight end position. They just spread the fuck open. They spread the Red Sea like Moses, as I always like to say. And he's going to be able to fucking just run a train on them. He's going to be able to score touchdowns at will if he is healthy. And I am still even worried, even though he's probably playing up against this trash-ass Arizona defense. I just am not sure that I trust him. I'm going to be sitting down all the other Arizona tight ends. Next game here, we got the Jacksonville Jaguars at the Oakland Raiders. And I'm going to be starting up Darren Waller in this game. Darren Waller has low-key been playing pretty well the last couple of games. And up against this trash-ass Jacksonville Jaguars defense, I believe Darren Waller could be Darren Baller in this game. He could ball out of control, potentially be the number one tight end on the week. He's been low-key pretty good the last couple of weeks, even though he has not found the end zone. I think in this game up against the Jacksonville Jaguars, that is 100% in the books. I see I'm rubbing the crystal ball, looking into that shit, and I can see Darren Waller having a huge Mungus game this week. I'm going to be sitting down the Jacksonville Jaguars tight ends. Obviously, they've had a few this year that were pretty good, but they all got fucking hurt, so you're not starting the other carousel of tight ends on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Next game here, we got the Vikings at the Chargers. I'm going to be starting up Hunter Henry in this game. Obviously, you can't stop rolling out Hunter Henry, even though he has kind of not played all that amazing the last couple of games. You know the talent is there, and you know that Mr. 12 Kids Phillip Rivers loves to feed the ball to Hunter Henry, so he's obviously going to be a start this week, even up against a Minnesota Vikings defense. Defense that is kind of good. I'm going to be sitting down Kyle Rudolph, the red nose reindeer, had a very shiny nose, but in this game, you know, that was a bit too long. Hopefully, I didn't get copyright strikes for saying that, but Kyle Rudolph is going to look okay in this game. I'm not saying he's going to be a top 12 guy, top 15 guy, so that's why he's a sit, but I honestly think he has potential to blow up in this game, but if Adam Thielen is back, I'm really retracting anything on Kyle Rudolph, the red nose reindeer, this week. Next game here, we got the LA Rams at the Dal Ass Cowboys. I'm going to be starting up Tyler Higby in this game. Now, with Gerald Everett out, Tyler Higby, I want to just show you a real graph, but it's going to be a hand graph, a real life graph. So, this at the beginning of the season, they were kind of, you know, here and here. You know, this is Tyler Higby. This is fucking Gerald Everett. We're going to do the Macarena here. You know what I'm saying? But Tyler Higby, they were on the same fucking level, okay? And then, and then Gerald Everett over here, he like got way up. He was going up way higher. And then Gerald Everett, after slowly was declared, and then he got hurt, and now Tyler Higby has been balling out of goddamn control, and I believe that Tyler Higby is going to ball out this game against the Dallas Cowboys. He is going to cut their ear off, put it on a goddamn necklace, and skull fuck them this Sunday. I believe that Tyler Higby is in for a humongous game. I'm going to be sitting down old man Jason Witten, better off being in the fucking booth at this point because he's so pissed off at the goddamn team. I don't think Jason Witten is really going to be able to do anything in this game. Next game here, we got the Falcons at the 49ers, and I like kind of love, I like like, you know what I'm saying, like we're in fucking elementary school, I like like both of these tight ends in this game, wink, 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 I like Austin Hooper in this game, I believe he could have a big game up against the 49ers, we saw last week Jared Cook drop it down on the fucking defense of the 49ers, I believe Austin Hooper could do the same thing, especially with Calvin Ridley gone, I believe that George Kittle will have a huge game up against a trash ass Falcons defense, George Kittle is obviously an auto stat in to your lineup, next game here we got the Bills at the Steelers, the Sunday night match up. I like neither of these guys in this game. I actually hate both of them. Vance McDonald, I just do not trust him. Dawson Knox one time, if you're with me, does not get enough touches, enough looks in the game to warrant being a guy that I start same way I feel about Vancey Vance McDonald. Now onto the Monday night football game. Colts at the New Orleans Saints. I'm going to be starting up Jared Cook in this game. If he's okay. If he's good to go on Monday. Obviously, we'll know a lot more on Sunday if he's going to play. If he's going to play, he's probably a top five guy, top six guy in this game. The Colts defense is really good against the run. It's not so much against the pass. I think that Jared Cook, who has been on fire NBA jam style, so I think I would keep rolling him out in my lineup. And Jack Doyle has been looking phenomenal ever since T.Y. Hilton has been gone and Eric Ebron has been gone. I really think that Jack Doyle will be able to put up a big game this week 
in New Orleans. So thank you guys all for watching this video. If at any point you ended up enjoying, please make sure to click that subscribe button down below. Make sure to check out OverlayDFS.com. Link down below in the description. Click that subscribe button. Click any, click the fucking video. It's right here. There's one right here as well. Have a great rest of your day. I love each and every single one of you guys. Don't you ever forget that. Goodbye, my friend.